This is video um, number 13 concerning various topics in quantum mechanics. Um, we want to remind you that the playlist for the videos, the playlist is getting progressively longer each day. The playlist for the videos you can find at digital-university.org. Okay, in our past videos, we had talked a little bit about the Dirac delta function, and basically it has this property where it's zero, we're just confining our discussion right now to the x-axis, it is zero everywhere on the x-axis except for a point where x is equal to the, va the value lambda, and then at that point it's just a spike. Now, one of the interesting applications of the Dirac delta function is when it's integrated together with a function like this. This is going to be zero everywhere except when x is equal to lambda. Then here we would have f of lambda, and lambda is just some given number or some given constant, so f of lambda is going to be some constant expression or some constant number so we can take it to the outside of the integral. So this equals f of lambda. Then we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x minus lambda dx. And this is zero everywhere except when x equals lambda. And then as we discussed, I think it was in video number 11, another unusual feature of these direct delta functions is that the integral of this, or the area of that, is 1. So here we have f of lambda times 1, or equals f of lambda. So this expression right here, simply equals f of lambda. So we can think of it as we have um, a lot of f of x functions existing from minus infinity to infinity, and this selects one of them, the one that where, f of e, where we have f of lambda at that particular expression. Now, if we just had it like this, now for x minus lambda, But just this, then that's equal to zero everywhere except when x equals zero. So if this is the x axis and here is where x equals zero, then at that zero point you would have the spike. And if you had the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of x delta x dx, then that just equals f of zero. Okay, but what if we have, say, this kind of an expression, where we have the direct delta function, not of x or t, but we have it for a constant times that variable. Like this. What is that equal to? And the way to get an insight is to consider this in conjunction with some function under an integral sign. So, for example, if we had it like this, some function, and we're going from minus infinity to plus infinity, some function f of t, then here we have the Dirac delta function of a times t dt. Well, if we make a variable substitution, um, let's let beta equal a times t, then dt, that would just be d beta divided by a. like this. So we can rewrite the integral. This would be equal to 
the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f of t. And now here we have direct delta function of a times t. So that would be, this would just simply be f of t would be beta over a. Like this, just substituting for the t, and then we have direct delta function of beta, and then d beta with 1 over a. On the outside, a is just a constant. Now, let's look at this expression. This is equal to er 0 everywhere, except when beta equals 0. And when beta equals 0, that 0, so we just get f of 0. So this is equal to 1 over a times f of 0. Now, what happens if a is less than 1? Then this, here we would have a negative sign. So if a is less than 1, we could have a minus 1a over here, or here we would have minus 1 over a f of 0. But a is less than 1. So this would come out as a positive expression. So what we have so far then is this. This integral right here, going from minus infinity to plus infinity, f of t, dt, equals 1 over the absolute value of a times f of 0. Okay, but now f of 0, f of 0 equals this. Oops, try to write it more neatly. f of 0 is equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t times Dirac delta function of t dt. This is 0 everywhere except when t equals 0. Then we get f of 0, and that's just f of 0 times 1, as we demonstrated just a few moments ago. So f of 0, we can write this in for f of 0. So this is equal to 1 over a times this integral right here. Minus infinity to plus infinity, f of t delta t. dt. And 1 over a, that's just a constant. If we want to, we can move it right inside of the integral sign. So we'd have it like this. Take that away. And let's compare these now. Make some room. Make a long equation sign. So this integral, f of t, f of t, Delta a t is equal to f of t 1 over a delta t. So that implies that this equals this. So at the beginning we said we want to see what does this mean? 
Now we know we have this. Now that means then that if A say was negative 1, that would still be equal to, so then we'd have delta of minus t, that's 1 over 1 equals delta t. We just use a equals negative 1 here. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1, so this is just 1. So this equals delta t. So you see that the direct delta function is an even function. That's one of the um, things that we can see from this equation. Also, if we have it, say, written like this, of, say, t divided by some constant k, then that would be equal to k times direct delta function of t. This, of course, just follows from this. Okay, that's all I want to say in this video, but we want to take some time and establish these relationships because in the next video, when we talk about four-way transforms, we're going to use this information. And then once we talk about four-way transforms, we can go back to the problems that we had set up in our previous videos where we were discussing the eigenfunctions of the position operator, where its corresponding eigenfunction was or for the momentum operator, where its corresponding eigenfunction was and we were having problems well here we could see that these were orthogonal but whether they were square integrable was another question and whether these are orthogonal we had a question about even establishing that because of the weird type of integral that's involved because here the definition is if two functions are orthogonal that equals zero when i does not equal j. Well here, if you try to ask whether this type of function is orthogonal, you end up with this kind of integral. Where we go from minus infinity to plus infinity, and we have e to the i. We have an expression like p minus p prime divided by h bar times x dx, and this, in order to try to integrate that, we have to know more about four-way transforms and direct delta functions in relation to four-way transforms. So that's what we're going to tackle in the next video. Then we can come back and we can address this issue, and where, as well as the um, orthonormal possible properties of these kind of eigenfunctions. But first we'll take another detour and discuss four-way transforms and how they relate to the Dirac delta function. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue. We'll continue our discussion here.